everyone. Today I've ventured down into the lower reaches of the Ovens River to see if I can catch an elusive Ovens River golden perch, otherwise known as yellow belly. Yep, they're going mad! <laughs> Finally! Right here, folks, the Ovens River isn't a well known golden perch fishery or well known yellow belly fishery. There was good numbers of yellow belly here back in the 1990s, but once the trout cod stockings started in the late 90s, the yellow belly stocking discontinued, I think around about 94 or 95. So for the last 20 odd years, we haven't seen yellow belly put into the Ovens River itself. Until early this year when Victorian fisheries put, I think, 30,000 yellow belly in around Wangaratta. Now, in the last few years, there still has been a few yellow belly caught, including some rather large ones, but most of them have come from this lower reaches of the Ovens River, down around Bundalong, which is a stone's throw that way from where I'm standing. So if I want to catch a yellow belly, this is the better part of the Ovens River to target them. Now, the Murray Cod are spawning at this time of year, and I need to leave them alone. So I've left my lures at home because I don't want an aggressive cod to come out and become territorial around its nest and hit my lure. So I've left my lures at home. I've left barty grubs at home because you don't target yellow belly with big barty grubs. I've left the cheese at home because you don't use cheese when you're fishing for yellow belly. You might use shrimp, you might use really little yabbies, but best of all, I find, particularly in rivers, worms. The humble garden worm, or in this case, the Nathalia night crawlers that I bought from Apco on the way down. I'm using light line, I'm using small hooks, and I'm genuinely targeting Murray Cod. Uh, sorry, genuinely targeting Golden Perch. If I do happen to encounter a Murray Cod with a small hook on the worms, chances are it'll be a small Murray Cod. It's unlikely that I will encounter a great big spawning fish with worms. If I do, well, it'll be this one and it'll be right here. If I put a kayak in and go down there flicking lures, I'll encounter cod all over the place and make a hell of a mess to the spawning. But just by using bait in one spot, using the bait of worms, I'm unlikely to tangle with a, a mature sized Murray Cod that's likely to be spawning. So anyway, let's see if I can pull this off. Let's see if I can catch an elusive yellow belly from the Ovens River. And I've got to tell you folks, if I do, it'll be the first yellow belly I've caught in the Ovens River for probably, in the Ovens River for probably about 10 years, I reckon. I caught one in the King River a couple of years ago, which blew me away. It was a, uh, a bycatch chasing Murray Cod. But if I catch one down here while I'm targeting them, it'll be the first time for probably 9 or 10 years that I can remember. Rightio folks, if you're coming down to any of these lowland or riverland type of areas this time of the year in the spring, when I mean, there's a lot of mud flats, there's a lot of water in the river, the lagoons and billabongs and swamps and etc have all got water in them, make sure you bring an guard or some kind of insect repellent. There's a whole plethora of different insect repellents on the market these days. This is my personal favourite. This is all I ever use. This is the Coles, the Coles Personal Insect Repellent. It's basically it's the Coles brand of Aeroguard. It's the cheapest and it does the job really, really effectively. There's others out there. There's Red, there's the proper Aeroguard. There's different sorts of Aeroguard. There's Bushman's is quite popular, but also quite expensive. I find... But this cheaper Coles brand insect repellent works just as good, if not better, than anything else. And at the moment, you'd be crazy to come down here without anything. And I've got a nibble on my worm rod here. I'll just go and see what's going on with that. Hello, something grabbed it. Look. Oh, I missed it. That was quite a nice bite, and I failed to hook up. Have I been doing this long? was quite a nice bite that and I uh, was a little bit slow and dopey. How unusual. Anyhow folks as I was saying before I was interrupted by a nice bite there if you are coming down to these riverland areas or any swampy marshy sort of areas where there's mosquitoes and this is the worst time of the year for them make sure you take some kind of insect for repellent because there are, mosquitoes can be nasty little bastards Last year, a good friend of mine contracted Ross River fever, most likely from a mosquito bite down at Yarrawonga. One of the fittest people I know, and it knocked him for six on so many levels. So, make sure you bring personal insect repellent. Very, very he's important. He's back. He's nibbling. He's nibbling. He's nibbling. He's nibbling. Got him. What have I got? Is this the elusive Ovens River yellow belly? It could be, you know. It's a bloody dirty stinking mud marlin. Now, 
it is, I'm only using four pound line here. Using four pound line, I haven't bought a landing net and I can't really get down to the water to wet my hands or grab him properly or anything. Hmm. Tell you what folks, he might only be a carp, but he's a fish. And I'm fishing, I'm not yellow bellying, I'm not codding, I'm not trouting. I am fishing and this is a fish. This probably the least desirable species that I could have possibly caught. <laughs> I saw a line on the old TV show, a river somewhere once. Catching one of these is just one step better than hooking the anchor rope. <laughs> one of my all-time favourite sayings. Oh, he's putting a bend in the old Black Queen. Come on, Muddy. I'll get you over this bit of crap near the edge here, that wrapping you around it. I'm high sticking my carp here. That means I'm holding my fishing rod really high. You can do that with these old graphite rods, but it's not advisable with these old fiberglass rods, not this black queen, but it's not advisable to high stick a graphite rod because you break the tip off. Come on mate, I want to get me line back in the water. Right, now, how am I going to get you out? Do you hear? I'm going to end up in the drink here, I can see it coming, if I try and just skull drag him, I will snap the line. Come here mate. Come on. Come on, you've had your fun. Time's up. Got ya. Almost got ya. Now I've got ya. There we go. It's not the Ovens River. It's not the Ovens River Yellow Belly I was after, it's the Ovens River Mud Marlin. He's a marlin and he's covered in mud. Sorry mate, hope you've enjoyed your life because it's about to come to a sudden end. You're looking a little bit green around the gills there mate. That'll offend someone. Last time I put footage of a dead carp on my YouTube channel I got abused. Some Russian guy abused the shit out of me in Russian and I didn't know what he said so I said thanks mate, I appreciate it or something. I said to him, I said thanks buddy. And someone translated and showed me what he actually said, and I, I actually thanked him for abusing me. <laughs> How you going there, buddy? Hey, can you sing a song? See if I can get your worm out of me worm bucket. Oh, these are friendly. It's actually not uncommon to find friendly kookaburras around sort of public campsites. Hey mate, look. You want it? Do you want it? Do you want it? What if I put it down here for you? Look, it's down here. Look. You want the worm? You want the worm? Look, I'll throw him over there for you. There you go. Go and get him. Look, he's got it. There he goes. He said, thank you, Robbie. Now, I'm really sorry, buddy, but I'm about to catch a whole heap of yellow belly, so I can't give you any more of my worms, okay? Look, look three of yous. Just tell me something. Does it get any better than that? A family of kookaburras, no more than four or five metres from me, singing their song. Absolutely fantastic. Rightio, kookaburra. I'll give you one more. Just one more, and that's it. Here's the worm. I'll throw him out here in the sun. Are you watching? There you go. Here comes another one. He said thank you. Did you just say thank you? Now we've got a bloody magpie coming down too. I'm going to run out of bait soon. I can't help myself. I keep feeding the wildlife. One more. 
One more and that's it. Hang on. I'm gonna run out of bait. There's three there. Alright, here we go. Last one. Can you hear him saying thank you? That's it mate, I can't give you any more, I'll run out of worms. I'd like to be able to give you another one. I'd like to be able to give you another one mate, but I just can't. I'm gonna run out of worms otherwise. You are beautiful aren't you? Hey look at you! You are absolutely gorgeous, mate. Absolutely beautiful. Rightio, folks. It's almost at that time of night where I can barely see my fishing rods in the dark. It's just about time to pull up stumps and go home. Now, we, as soon as I got here, within five minutes of setting up my rods, I had a nice bite and I missed it. Within five minutes of that, I had another nice bite and I hooked it and there was that big fat carp. Two and a half hours have passed and I haven't had another bite. I'm surprised because the conditions seem quite good, but the fishing is very slow. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because, just to prove, just because I've got a YouTube channel and I've been writing fishing reports in magazines for the last 10 years that doesn't mean that I'm immune from these fishless trips. I've had a few of them lately over at Lake Mudamere but I've had poor weather on those days. Today I've got really good weather. I've been blaming the weather over there. I don't know what I'm going to blame for today. <laughs> I don't usually share these types of videos where the action's been poor otherwise you might not want to click on the next videos but I just wanted to share this one of, of a slow fishing trip and a quiet fishing trip just to prove that it happens to all of us and I'm not immune and no fishing journalist in the world is immune from these fishing, these fishless trips. We get snagged in trees, we get tangles in our line and we go fishing and catch nothing sometimes. They're just the, the bits of footage that don't normally make the editors cut if you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, all part of the fun, the highlight for me today was feeding these kookaburras, I had a ball doing that. Had I known I wasn't going to get any more bites I would have given the poor bloody things a whole lot of worms and just Saturday feeding them all afternoon. <laughs> but that was the highlight. Seeing a sea eagle fly over was great. I can hear a koala singing in a tree. For those that don't know what the koala sounds like, it makes a very loud sort of rough noise like a <laughs> There's one over there somewhere. I sound just like uh, Caramello koala I think. There's one in a tree over there somewhere. <laughs> Anyhow, I think I've just scared all the fish off. That's if there was any here to start with. Thank you very much for watching. The hunt for the elusive Ovens River Yellowbelly will continue when I get time, maybe later in the week. 